Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 16th of November. Religious places in India's Maharashtra reopen after seven months since COVID lockdown. India and Afghanistan deny Pakistan's terror funding allegations. And Hindus in Nepal and India celebrate sibling festival amid pandemic. And now for all the details. India has reported less than 50,000 new daily cases of COVID-19 for the eighth continuous day, a trend which assumes wider significance as many other countries continue to see a surge in their daily numbers. Meanwhile, religious places across western Maharashtra state reopened for devotees to offer prayers from Monday after several months of closure due to lockdown imposed in a bid to control the COVID-19 pandemic. Religious places in India's western Maharashtra state reopened on Monday after eight months of closure due to strict COVID-19 pandemic protocols. Maharashtra was one of the last states in the country to allow religious places to reopen as part of Unlock 5.0 guidelines. While devotees have been allowed to visit religious places in Maharashtra, they will have to follow all the COVID-19 guidelines strictly. Many devotees visited the iconic Siddhi Vinayak temple and were seen following strict social distancing. The famous Haji Ali Darga and Mahim Darga also reopened and strict social distancing measures were in place. I'm very happy that in the new year, I got to know the Bhagya Mandu to the Bhagya Mandu. So I'm very happy and I'm very happy to keep them in the same way. I'm very happy to keep them in the same way. I'm very happy to keep them in the same way. I'm very happy to keep them in the same way. While India's daily increase in cases has been under the 50,000 mark for eight straight days, around half its record peak, the city-state of Delhi has recorded over 7,000 cases a day over the last five days, a record level. The country's COVID-19 tally as of Monday stands at 8,845,127. Meanwhile, Delhi Health Minister Satyendra Jain dismissing the speculations on Monday said, no lockdown will be imposed in the national capital in the wake of the third wave of COVID-19 since it has already peaked out. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah, who took the stock of the COVID-19 situation in the national capital on Sunday, said that India will fly doctors in from other regions, double the quantity of tests carried out and ensure people wear masks in efforts to contain the coronavirus spread. The air quality in Indian capital New Delhi continued to remain in the very poor category on Monday despite light spells of rain on Sunday evening. However, residents expressed they got a slight relief after the rain as the pollution levels had worsened over the weekend due to the bursting of firecrackers during Festival of Lights Diwali. A day after light spells of rain, air quality in Indian capital New Delhi continued to remain in very poor category on Monday, according to Central Monitoring Agency, Safar. The overall air quality index or AQI was recorded at 319 during noon, which is considered very poor and unhealthy. Locals, however, said they got a sigh of relief after the rain as it improved visibility and considerably brought down pollution levels which had surpassed even the severe category following Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, after many revelers defied bans on using firecrackers to celebrate. We were seeing that we had a lot of pain, a lot of pain, a lot of pain, and a lot of pain. And especially the patients who had a lot of pain, so in the rain, there was a lot of pain. But we can't do anything from the rain. गवर्नमेंट के लिए कुछ करना पड़ेगा तो हमें गवर्नमेंट को कॉपरेट करना पड़ेगा न्यू डेलीज एयर पोल्यूशन टिपिकली वर्सन्स इन अक्टूबर एंड नवंबर ड्यू टू फार्मर्स बर्निंग एग्रीकल्चरल वेस्ट कोल फायर पावर प्लांट्स ट्रैफिक एंड विंटलेस डेज 
The raging coronavirus epidemic with more than 400,000 cases in the city of 20 million people has also heightened concerns. India and Afghanistan have slammed Pakistan over allegations that New Delhi was funding terrorists and training them on Afghan soil. India's foreign ministry said the claims were fabricated and instead blamed Islamabad of sponsoring terrorists who launch attacks in India. India and Afghanistan have slammed Pakistan over allegations that India is involved with terror organizations on its soil and in Afghanistan. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said on Saturday that Pakistan will present a dossier of evidence with the United Nations and other international agencies. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastav in a statement said, the so-called claims of proof against India have no credibility and are fabricated. The international community is aware of Pakistan's tactics and proof of its terror sponsorship has been admitted by none other than its own leadership. Afghanistan's foreign ministry also rejected Islamabad's claim about the use of Afghan soil against Pakistan and termed them as baseless. India not only denies interfering in Pakistan, but accuses Islamabad itself of supporting terrorists who launch attacks in India and spread unrest in India's Jammu and Kashmir, a claim Pakistan denies. The accusations come at a time of heightened tension between the nuclear-armed neighbours after at least 10 Indian civilians and 5 security personnel were killed in cross-border shelling by Pakistan along the de facto border in Jammu and Kashmir last Friday. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf party on Monday, led with at least nine seats in the hotly contested election held in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan, according to unofficial results. The two other main contenders, the Pakistan People's Party and Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, complained about irregularities and alleged rigging in the election held on Sunday. The election was held despite protests by people of Gilgit Baltistan against Pakistan's illegal occupation of the region. The opposition parties had earlier blamed Imran Khan of influencing voting after he announced he would provide provisional provincial status to Gilgit Baltistan. India, which claims the region, has also rejected Khan's plan to alter Gilgit Baltistan's legal status and said the election was an exercise to cover up Pakistan's occupation of the region. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladesh earlier this month opened its first Islamic religious school for transgender students in the latest effort to give the minority group more rights in the conservative Muslim-majority nation. Bangladesh's law minister has said that transgender people will soon be able to inherit property from their families. Bangladesh's law minister Anisul Haq over the weekend said, that transgender people will soon be able to inherit property from their families, the latest effort to give the minority group more rights in the conservative Muslim-majority nation. Known as hijras in many South Asian countries, such people are often banished from their homes at a young age. Bangladesh, the country of 168 million people, is officially secular, but property legislation still follows religious laws with transgender people mostly barred from inheriting estates when parents die. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina reportedly told a cabinet meeting that new inheritance laws for the group were being drafted. The bill has yet to be proposed in parliament but is expected to comfortably pass the legislative body. Bangladesh has allowed transgender people who number around 1.5 million to identify as a separate gender since 2013. Last year, they were allowed to register to vote as a third gender. Earlier this month, the South Asian country opened its first Islamic school for transgender Muslims. But the LGBTQI community still faces widespread discrimination, with a colonial-era law in place that punishes gay sex by prison terms, though enforcement is rare. More on news from Bangladesh. A 17-year-old activist, Sadat Rahman, from Bangladesh, who created a mobile application to give a voice to young victims of cyberbullying, has won the 2020 International Children's Peace Prize this year. According to Rahman, 
almost half of all teenagers present online on Bangladesh have experienced cyberbullying. Sadat Rehman, a 17-year-old activist from Bangladesh, won the 2020 International Children's Peace Prize, whose laureates include Nobel Peace Prize laureate Malala Yousafzai and prominent teenage climate activist Greta Thunberg. Rehman got the trophy and the 100,000 euro prize that goes with it for having developed Cyber Teens, an app through which young victims of cyberbullying could contact a group of volunteers who take the issue to the police or to the social workers. Yusuf Zai made the announcement of Rehman's award from London during the ceremony physically held at The Hague. I strongly believe awareness, empathy, counseling, and action are the four drivers of force to combat cyberbullying. The fight against cyberbullying is like a war. And in this war, I am a warrior. If everybody keeps supporting me, then together we will win this battle against cyberbullying. Rehman's app has already been downloaded 1,800 times and has led to eight arrests, including of adults who have sent pornography content to minors. Hindus across Nepal and India on Monday celebrated Bhai Duj, which is also called Bhai Tika, a sibling festival, which marks the significance of the relation between the brothers and sisters. Bhaiduj also marks the end of celebrations of the Hindu festival of lights Diwali. Hindus in Nepal and India on Monday celebrated Bhai Tika, also called Bhai Duj, a sibling festival which marks the significance of the relation between the brothers and sisters. On this day, sisters perform the traditional ritual of applying tilak or vermilion mark on their brothers' foreheads and tie holy thread on their wrists fasting and praying for their long and happy life. Brothers reciprocate by giving gifts to their sisters. This year, the festival was, however, marred due to the rising cases of COVID-19 in Nepal. Men who don't have a sister as sibling thronged the historic Bal Gopaleshwar temple and received sacred vermilion mark from there. <laughs> Legend has it that the rituals of Bhai Duj were instituted by Yamaraj, the Hindu god of death, when he was invited to his twin sister Yami's house. Yami offered prayers to Yamaraj and in turn he gave her a gift. Bhai Duj also marks the end of celebrations of Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights. Kedarnath Temple, one of the holiest Hindu shrines in India's northern Uttarakhand state on Monday, received fresh snowfall causing a significant dip in the temperature levels of the hills. Devotees from across the country who reached there were seen enjoying the snow even as the portals of the temple closed for winters. The Shrine of Kedarnath, one of the holiest Hindu shrines in India's northern Uttarakhand state, was covered in a layer of snow on Monday as the valley and the surrounding hills received fresh spells of snowfall, causing a significant dip in the temperature levels of the hills. Devotees from across the country who reached there were seen enjoying the snow even as the portals of the temple closed for winters. Every year, the temple shuts down for six months in winter when snow cuts off roads and temperatures dip to sub-zero levels and opens for public in summer. The Kedarnath Temple, a stop in the popular pilgrimage route known as the Char Dham Yatra, which covers four temple towns of Kedarnath, Badrinath, Gangotri and Yamunotri, attracts hundreds of thousands of devotees every year. Meanwhile, breaking long dry spell in the region, a sudden change in the weather blessed Shimla and several areas of Himachal Pradesh state with season's first snowfall. 
Mandol village in Shimla district was covered under a thick blanket of snow on Monday while locals remained indoors in the village. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.